It is 522. It's 900 CHML. I'm Scott Thompson. 3D YouTube videos, Skype broadcast, a T-shirt that lets you monitor your heartbeat, a detector that wakes sleepy drivers, brain imaging, a robotic plane, automated smart blinds, a fall detection and prevention system. These are just a few of the 60 projects that are on display by more than 200 fourth-year electrical and computer engineering students at McMaster University tomorrow as they present their final year-end projects. Everyone at Mac from the community is invited to view these projects. The event is being held at CIBC Hall, third floor, McMaster University Center, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon and then 1 to 4. To tell us more about this, Steve uh, Ranilovich is with us, and he is a professor of electrical and computer engineering, and he's on the line with us now. Good afternoon, Steve. How are you today? Great. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, so first of all, tell us about these final year projects. Uh, do all the students have to participate in this? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we at Mac uh, believe very firmly that you can't just learn engineering from only a book. I mean, you have to put it into practice and really do it to, to learn it. And, you know, on display will be some examples of that philosophy from our electrical, computer, and biomedical engineering students. And how long have these students been working on these? Eight months. So this is a full year course from September, and they finish this week. So what's the criteria for these projects? Is the sky the limit? Can they do anything they want? What's the, what are the uh, boundaries? Well, certainly uh, students are encouraged to think creatively. Uh, they conceive of the projects, they design them, and they develop them uh, on their own, with, of course, with support from our faculty and from our staff here. So, yeah, they really are encouraged to, uh, to think creatively, and many have gone on to start successful startups based on some of their projects. Where are they getting these ideas? Well, you'd be surprised at how creative uh, our students are. So most of them are, are internal. Uh, we have myself and other faculty colleagues come up with ideas, and really, from necessity, a lot of these ideas come up. And this uh, entire project is their final mark, correct? That's correct. So the course is, is based entirely on this project and on how they can uh, demonstrate it to the public at large, and that's why we're inviting the, uh, the public at large to come in. A lot of pressure for the student, though, isn't it, when you think about it, Steve? Because, uh, you know, however many years they've been in the program, now all of a sudden it all comes down to one thing. And here's what you've learned, and, and, and here's where you hope to take this. Right. And you know what? It's, it's really a nice simulation of what engineering really is. It requires you to put together a knowledge from a lot of different areas and to produce some interesting technology at the end of the day. And all of our students are able to produce some really exciting projects, so it's very exciting. You touched on this before. Uh, this has resulted in a springboard into uh, entrepreneurship or perhaps a job offer later down the road? Most definitely. Uh, you know, a number of groups have actually gone off and started successful ventures afterwards, started successful firms. Uh, others uh, are more interested in research-type applications and then continue this on as a research-type uh, of work. And others, even if they don't continue it, get invaluable experience for industry. So, you know, not that we would all have this sort of vision when we, when we start university, but theoretically you could come in with an idea and then spend your years uh, studying this and then come up with your final business plan, couldn't you? Certainly. I mean, I mean the idea will evolve, and, and as you gain more information and more knowledge about the area, uh, your, your strength in the area will, will evolve. But, of course, yeah, you're right. It's possible indeed. Give us some examples of some of these projects in the past that, uh, you know, have enlightened you. Uh, 3D YouTube videos. I'm guessing we're seeing a lot of uh, 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 personal devices, a, a lot of, uh, of this sort of thing that the youth are involved in today. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there, there's a popular film called Avatar recently, which I think <laughs> thrust 3D onto the, onto the public uh, uh, limelight. But, yeah, we have a group which has built a 3D camera. Um, which can image in 3D, and they produce the 3D display. You have to put on some special glasses, but you can see the, the resulting field in 3D. And who knows, maybe your next uh, video camera will be 3D and powered by some of the technology developed here at McMaster. Steve, this is totally off topic, but obviously you've been following this. You know what this is all about. You know that most of us have these big TVs now, and now I guess the next stage is for 3D uh, after HD. Can you see us all as consumers sitting in our rec room with a pair of glasses on with all the members of the family watching a 3D TV? Well, you know what, Scott? Maybe not, maybe not in that simple embodiment, but... Um, I never will uh, sell short technology. You know, we can always come up with great ideas, and our students are full of them. So I'll never say never. I think there's some great ideas coming down the pipe that will make that practical. All right, Steve, give us uh, all the details again, when and where. So tomorrow, uh, everyone's invited between 9 and noon and 1 and 4 uh, at McMaster University Student Center on the campus of McMaster University on the third floor in CIBC Hall. 